Bob's in a pod. Bob's in a pod. Welcome to Pops in a Pod. Nadir Pop here. And Peter Pop. Peter, I'm really excited for this episode. I mean, we have named it The Science of Dads. Yeah, you know, after 100 episodes, we're still learning something new about parenting. And now we know there's a science behind being a dad as well. Who knew? I know. I mean, I, I remember talking to... Uh, our guest, Dr. Rakesh Kapoor, and you know, when he was doing his conversation for our warm up call, I was like, wow, this is this is going to be that episode. So I've already mentioned the name of the guest. Um, so we've got Dr. Rakesh Kapoor. He's a management consultant and the director of the NGO Bamboo Tree. But you know what? Let's just hear it straight from Dr. Kapoor about his credential and his work on dads. So, here we go. Hi, Dr. Rakesh. Welcome to Pops in a Pod. Hi, thank you so much, uh, Peter and Nadir. It's such a pleasure to be here on a very, very unique podcast. I think uh, this is something brilliant and excellent that you guys have been doing. Really awesome to be here. Thank you. We really appreciate that you've you've uh, removed time for us and you've come here. Both of us, Peter and I, are looking forward for a really, really good conversation. But... I guess before we kind of jump into what the conversation is all about, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay. So, you know, like I keep saying, this is the toughest thing to do. Tell somebody about yourself. But uh, I think let me just start off with, uh, more importantly, I am a father of a 13-year-old girl. And she's equal measures of uh, joy and frustration. But um, I think somewhere that actually started the journey um, For me, actually, I'm a medical doctor, as I said, but I don't practice. I uh, do management consultancy for hospitals. But what is far more important uh, for this podcast is about nine years back, I started an NGO called Bamboo Tree Children's Foundation, which we started working a lot with children of separated parents, right? Because that we found us to be an extremely uh, vulnerable group. And that is what led us to... uh, seeing certain things that we we coined this term, which we call as semi-orphans, right? So almost four out of five children who go through uh, the Indian family court system or the Indian uh, uh, divorce, this thing, 80% of the children actually get semi-orphaned. That is, they lose not just one parent, but one half of their family, one half of their roots, one half of their values, right? So that's when we started getting into this international consortium of uh, you know, mental health professionals and doctors who started studying what is the impact of children on this and which then led us to believe that let's really look at the entire science of fatherhood. So, you know, we started looking at the entire, uh, how do the fathers uh, impact their children? What impact happens when they are not there? So that led us to actually setting up our own YouTube channel to talk about all of these things, which is there as Bamboo Tree Children's Foundation. So yeah, that's me and that's the kind of work I've been doing. Yeah, I still remember actually, Doctor, uh, earlier, I think it was sometime mid last month or early last month, uh, we had a phone conversation and, you know, the whole thing that you talked about, and this is something that, you know, Nadir and I have always been talking about on the podcast, but a lot of the information or the things that we talk about is very anecdotal. And the moment I asked you, okay, what do you want to talk about? And I love the way you said the science of dads or science of fathers, which is so unique. Everyone only talks about, you know, certain aspects, but the very fact that, you know, there's research backing it. And I think barely we got off the phone. I immediately messaged another saying, you know what? I had such a great conversation. I think this is something that's going to excite you. So I'm glad, you know, we finally all got uh, down and are recording this episode. So since you talked about the research, let's kind of set some kind of context as to where we're coming from, right? I mean, uh, your part, you said you're part of the International Consortium of Mental Health Experts. And one thing Nadir and I noticed when we started the podcast all the way uh, three years ago with the idea, there wasn't a lot of data available, right? I mean, in terms of for dads, especially new dads, first time dads, there wasn't a lot of information. It's really sad that in 20 20- in this century, right? 
we still have to watch you know what you're expecting when you're expecting that's like the only reference that you have for parents uh in there but if you could just quickly introduce us to your research and with both aspects the international research and patterns that you've seen but also with the indian uh aspects also and when it comes to that that would be great no i think uh, you know you you mentioned very beautifully that lack of research one is of course india as a country just does not believe in data and research we believe that you know everything works on our own little gut instincts and feelings and let's just go ahead with whatever we feel but very importantly i think let me share this beautiful story why dads is not there so you know the entire international community research also on dads started late in the 1960s right and if you look at it the entire parenting thing it started in 1920s by a gentleman called john bolby right he started researching on where how do parents and how does parenting impact the children and how does this thing work and he was asked that you know okay so here is the mother here is the child and here is the dad this is what am i going to do with the dad dad i don't know what to even do about it you know so i'm going to just research the mother and the uh you know the child and look at just the impact you know it's a very fortunate thing that li- life how it turned so he had a great uh, uh disciple or a, a, or a student called Mary Ainsworth and she had a great disciple called Michael Lamb right and they just completely saw that the all the research that we are seeing on uh you know children and the impact is not able to explain what is happening right so uh, and what is happening i mean the differences in how children's outcomes come out is not able to actually explain it that's when they really started focusing on dads but what we've been uh, now doing is that now there is this huge global community which is uh, working on seeing because you know now we are looking at and trying to understand how dads play a role so we do a number of experiments all across so fortunately even science has been able to look at it in a beautiful way which is today with things like fmri that is functional mri so what we can actually do is look at which areas of brain are getting activated by when the child is there both in the parents and in the child and there are these beautiful pictures which come out right and you can actually really see what is happening in the child's mind at that point of time right so one of the very interesting things that came out is so let me just uh, put this across um uh, with you people that uh, fathers i want you to go back into your life when you uh, your wife was pregnant and i would like to say both of you that is your wife and you were pregnant but uh, let me ask you this did you notice that during those 9 months of pregnancy you gained exactly as much weight as the weight of your child guilty this is something i've actually talked about on the podcast right yeah. before so it's, yeah it's it's totally absolutely guilty. true um in fact uh, just just a couple of weeks ago so my my wife has a habit of uh, going back to old photographs and she's she set up this thing i i think it's on google or something where every day it tells you last year what you did on the same day right so it's a great right. way to sort of revive your memories and this one specific photo keeps coming up where i have just ballooned right i've become huge and and it's like it's amazing right what what is it like is it because of all the pressure and the tension of introducing a new human being into your home which you are just completely not ready for and that's why you've taken to eating or whatever it is and it was just fascinating and i'm so glad that you brought it up because yeah we did notice it we did notice physical changes in ourselves and not just the wife so yeah yeah with me actually it was the opposite i remember uh the first trimester my wife getting like morning sickness and there were certain foods that she absolutely couldn't enjoy like egg something that you know we would eat regularly she just couldn't handle the smell of egg and uh, we love going out to eat right and at this point i was like yeah come on she's pregnant a lot of times when we went out we would order two separate dishes but she could not even like finish even half of that and i was like okay i can't let this go to waste so there were times where i was eating my entire meal part of her meal and then in like 6 months it showed like i still remember baby shower pictures everyone was like 
whoa what happened to you and i was like yeah <laughs> so i know exactly what nadir is talking about looking back at pictures absolutely absolutely no so so that's so beautiful that you people actually noticed it right so you know now let me just introduce something what so both of you are suffered from suffered i'm using the word suffered very wrongly but i'm using the word from what is known as the kuwait syndrome okay now what does that mean right so a lot of us used to earlier so this earlier used to be known as sympathetic pregnancy that fathers sympathetically become pregnant along with the this thing right but now what we understand is that that's not true it's actually a biological changes which are happening inside your body so you can actually predict the weight of the child by seeing how much weight did the father gain during this thing it almost matches with wow you know, right <laughs> that's so, amazing but, i did not know that so secondly i would say okay so what is that one thing which our hindi movies or the bollywood have made it so famous as pregnancy means this the vomiting that we see or the morning oh, yeah. sickness that we see khatta khana yeah. is, yeah, yeah. huh khatta khana absolutely right now all of those changes happen absolutely within the fathers too so there was this study which was done in poland right where they saw morning sickness weight gain increased appetite khatta khana and all of that at least one or two of these symptoms are present in 23% uh, in 72% of the fathers sorry 72% and 23% of the fathers had all of them all of them put together right wow so that's when they actually a lot of research started into saying how does this even happen you know it seems like a miracle that you know you are you know you're, you're about what it, huge distance away from the mother and yet these changes are happening so what they started noticing was uh, i don't want to bore you guys with a lot of technical terms but there are these four hormones which control the entire pregnancy right so there is estrogen which is responsible for what we call as uh, the morning glow that we see in this thing right so they found that the estrogen levels in the fathers synchronize and they're almost the same as the mother which is great second what they saw was testosterone so one of the other things which happens is that the testosterone levels which is the most famous hormone that men are known for that goes down by 33% so what does that do that decreases your sexual libido yeah it, it's it's absolutely crazy when you think about it and you know i'm glad you're bringing this to right because when i'm going back to our discussions this is the kind of stuff that you know you hear about but uh, everyone kind of thinks that okay maybe i faced it another things he faced it but for all the dads who are listening to the episode i think like light bulb moments are happening and this is like we're just talking the very basic part of parenting and being a dad right we're not even like getting into the more macro stuff it's just still there the very simple stuff and we're still talking when your wife's pregnant or around that time so wow and this is basic biology i feel doctor i'm i'm so glad you've put it in context because you you you're backing it with research and to everything that you said that you know it's it's crazy when two bodies are completely apart they still somehow you know sync up i would have just thrown in a crude joke by saying bluetooth hoga connection but <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> you know for me uh, for for the uninitiated and uh, illiterate in these kind of matters it kind of it it does make sense now because clearly there has to be some form of science that is helping us understand this and and when you brought up the whole sexual drive and drop in libido i think it's very it's very human for all of us to at least open that discussion right no and uh, you know so that is something that nature has done for a very major reason because what it's saying is and you know that is why we bring on to the concept of saying why are human fathers so important right and that is because what it says is that this is the time when you need to put all your entire focus and this is real science which is saying you need to put your entire focus only on to the child so therefore the distractions like your sexual uh, behavior and your other things must go down right so which is what testosterone does but which brings me to a slightly more technical one but you might find very interesting 
is the other hormone called prolactin. Okay. Now, prolactin is the hormone which maintains pregnancy. And at the same time, what it does is decreases sexual libido. But also what it does is its more important role that was only known was that it basically helps in ejection of the breast milk, right? In formation and ejection of the breast milk. So nobody ever thought about it, that the question that, okay, why would even fathers have this hormone, right? Why is it even required, right, in fathers? But then they saw that the father's prolactin levels again sync up and increase with the mother's prolactin levels. So that means at three months of, when the child is three months, when prolactin levels are very high, in the mother, because the uh, ejection of milk, fathers are facing exactly the similar prolactin levels. And that's when the research went on to, and they started seeing what does prolactin do. So what prolactin does is, it is now known as the global parenting hormone. So what they found was that if I remove the prolactin from your or your uh, wife, that is the child's mother's body, both of you, will abandon the child within 24 hours. Let's be honest, you know, raising a child, at least initially in the first one year, is not, I'm sure both of you would have gone through those times when you would have said, damn, this child is really cute, but I just need a break, man. Enough is enough. Can somebody just, can somebody just throw the baby in the bathtub and get out kind of a thing, right? <laughs> now, Again, what nature tried to do was how does it ensure that there is this bonding happening, which is through what is known as the prolactin levels, right? And this prolactin is what causes, and the next hormone which really works is, so I don't know, when you were uh, probably 14, 15, 16, I don't know about you guys and your generation, but when was it that you first had first crush or your first love? Maybe 16, wow. 17? <laughs> The doc doctor is like taking us really way back now. Huh? <laughs> no, I, I think I was in the second or the third standard when when that that crush happened. So I think I must have been wow. seven. Now there was so. an early bloomer. I think I was about <laughs> yeah. like ten, twelve. I can't remember. No, don't, don't yeah. doctor, don't ask about our first crushes. Huh? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay, so here is something that I can give you. So every time you go back and see your wife and you're in love with her, what is causing that love is a hormone called oxytocin. Okay, and that is the hormone that is responsible for your entire parenting. So every time you see a child, right? And every, every time you... So what we've been able to find is that the fathers, even when they just smell their own child, their oxytocin levels are able to go up and they cause a feeling of warmth, feeling of love, you become more emotional, you become more caring towards the child, right? Now, which brings me to that thing about that when people say that mothers are natural, right? While fathers uh, have to be taught parenting. I don't know, what do you think? Is that true? See, I think this is one of those debates, right? And you, I don't think there's a middle ground for it. You either are for or against. I don't think you can say yes maybe i don't know kind of thing so but the way i look at it is it's the intent right always so like i'm going to talk from my personal experience and not from anyone else's i was very clear with my wife and i that we were going to have a child we talked about it we prepped for it uh, in there so whatever by then whatever effort it took whatever it needed to be done i was willing to do it and i think a lot of it came by instinct also for me uh i realized like uh, my wife and i keep having this thing that she says you know you're better at some things and i'm better at some things and i think recognizing that right is important instead of saying that this is your job this is my job so that that's how i would say same same journey of uh, you know planning and making sure that we were on the same page physically mentally emotionally to you know introduce another human being in in our family but i i don't know doc um, i think it has a lot to do with social construct as well right um, the way you've been raised the kind of uh, family setup 
um you've been you know raised in the society around you even your neighbors have a huge say sometimes especially in a country as diverse as india so i uh, i don't know i'd like to believe that biologically women are more uh, in in tune to to be prepared for um, you know motherhood or parenthood and fathers have to kind of get into that mode since there are no physical changes happening now this is me having just gained this knowledge what you have given me so i didn't i did not want to change that aspect uh, that's why i'm coming out clean and saying that i think it comes naturally for the mothers and for fathers it's more of a it's more of a setup but uh, i'm i'm sure there's a reason you have that even fathers are biologically in tune to do that no so you know both of you are absolutely in a way correct so this this statement is very correct which is to say that the mothers in the sense have these hormonal changes and these things which are happening uh directly but at the same time that's the only difference that we see between mothers and fathers their capability biologically is exactly the same but what differentiates the two is that fathers need the physical presence and touch and contact for all those hormonal changes to happen right so that is the only difference at the end of the day right so whether you want to call it natural or not natural that's that's really the way you want to look at it but uh, all these changes but there are some very 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 stark differences in the way uh, fathers and mothers react to the child and those differences i think is something that uh, which completely differentiates because the hormones are the same what differs is which area of the brain do these hormones actually activate which is what are different between the mothers and the fathers so you know doctor you mentioned about the physical aspect right and one thing nadir and i have kept talking about i'm not sure if we've talked about it on the podcast before but it's a very cultural thing which i've noticed only in india right where for the first child i don't know why not for the second and third but it's just for the first child the mother goes to her parents house and delivers there and after that depending on which part of india you're from she stays for another 3 to 4 months in there and with nadir and me where normally is where our wives didn't do that whole thing right and i don't know like in a way when i look back i'm glad because i cannot imagine spending like the first few months of my son's life without being there right and when you talked about just the fact that you know the physical aspect the hormones kind of get activated in dads would you kind of see a relationship between that no no there is definitely a huge relationship i mean so again experiments have been done on that so which is to say that like i said and this is important not just for the child equally important for the father so the experiments um, and what data is now saying is that as i said that the fathers and the children need to be in contact with each other right and therefore if the father's hormones levels don't rise right because there is lack of contact so i am particularly not against those people uh, the children uh, the mothers going for 3 months there but as long as that those 3 months the father is either also at the mother's place the father is equally in contact or there is very regular contact happening so let's say what you are talking about if the uh, the mother's or the mother's family stays in a different city and you see it once in a month that is harmful in the sense and it is so harmful that what data now shows is that children whose fathers are not involved physically involved with the child the death rate of children within the first one year of life is almost three times so we are talking about actual physical impact right the second major impact on this is so another thing which data shows is that any time that the father is involved within the first 6 months to a year of the child's life right the propensity or chances of that father continuously 
being involved for the next 18 years or the next 30 years of the child's life goes up about six times. So therefore, if you remove the father within the first three to six months, the bonding doesn't happen, right? And those three to first three to six months are extremely important, you know, which brings me to one of the most, another interesting thing, which I would love to ask you if you are, if you've noticed it, if not, your uh, listeners would love to notice it after I say this, how the fathers and mothers even hold their newborn child is extremely different. So how the mothers would hold it is that they would hold the child with the face of the baby always turned inwards to simply say, we are one compact unit. While what the uh, fathers would do is hold it in the palm of their hands and show the baby the outside world. So if you see, this is true for 90%. So if you see, they're holding it in the palm, the buttocks of the child are in the palm of their hand. And while the head is resting on the shoulder, but so showing them the outside world while the mother shows them, I am one compact unit, which brings in a huge amount of, so, you know, as I look at it, I don't know, first, before I even get into it, is that something you guys have ever uh, noticed or do you even see it? You I, take I don't number? remember. Yeah, I, I, I don't remember it too specifically, but I know one thing for sure. Um, as my daughter started getting older and, you know, was able to hold her head uh, and her, you know, neck became stronger. Instead of carrying her near my 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 shoulder level or my neck i would always carry her t- till here and all yeah. all the elders in my family like why are you carrying her like that you know you, why are you carrying her so l- low on your body you should carry her up and i'm like your child my child let's let's kind of get beside <laughs> that first right uh my child i will carry her the way i want and she's comfortable she's not crying so i, I think that's the only thing i very specifically remember about carrying my child lower on my body and not you know traditionally carrying her up over here so that, that's the only thing i remember yeah i'll, I'll yeah. have to go back and like substantiate this with the Google photos photographs. or whatever photographs I have. But I think you're right when it comes to this. I mean, we did get the carrier and I was never like, you know, comfortable having my son's like face on me. So so this uh, kind of depiction was made famous in the movie Hangover because my wife actually has a picture of me holding my son like that with the sunglasses and all of that. And then she sent it to family as a joke, like, oh my God, look at this. But I would always kind of prefer holding my son that way. It was a little more stable for me uh, in there. Never really did that consciously. But uh, I did notice the moment I held him the same way he would yeah. be out like a light. So I think I get where you're coming from because he'd feel that comfort. And I guess at that age, kids don't know, right? Mom, dad, they just feel body warmth. I can sleep. <laughs> you know, so like now what we are actually, I don't know if that happened in your mother's case, uh, in your uh, wife's case, that is a child's mother's case, was that we are very strongly, all gynecologists will very strongly recommend that there should be a lot more skin to skin contact between the mother and the child, right? And that holds true even for fathers, even more true, right? So unfortunately that's not happening so much in India, but you know, you must have hospitals uh, to be truthful, where for fathers, what, you know, so like the mothers have a nursing time where they have within the first whatever five days. Similarly for fathers, there has to be this skin to skin contact time. You know, so one of the stark differences, this was a Harvard pediatrician, uh, Michael Yogman, who did this. Uh, and what he found was that every time a mother walks in uh, to the child, the child's heart rate decreases. The child tends to close his or her eyes and simply says, it's like as if to say, ah, mom, right? And every time a father walks in, the child's heart rate increases, right? The child tends to open his pupils and eyes and says, yo, party time. So I have seen so many mothers complain and they actually say that children prefer to be held by their fathers because it's more stimulating, it's more fun and interesting for them. So, you know, I don't know if you guys have seen this uh, beautiful movie, one of my favorite movie, uh, Italian movie called A Beautiful Life, Roberto Benigni, yeah, right? Yeah. 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 
So I mean, how one of the few movies that actually made me cry. Absolutely. But do you remember how he made even the most gruesome uh you know Nazi concentration camp to be fun for the child because that's what fathers do. They make things fun for the child. So I've seen so many mothers tell me if your wives have complained. I held this child for 9 months. I did everything for the child and the moment the father walks in the child just rushes to the father what's wrong with me has that ever happened dr kapoor it's a global meme <laughs> <laughs> it's a global meme but now i think we are we're very glad we are talking to you because you are giving us scientific fodder to throw at our wives every time they complain to us saying what the hell and they were like by the way there is science there's a harvard back science that dr kapoor told us about and i'm going to read it out to you <laughs> so thank you <laughs> yeah. yeah and i think it, it it it's not only just when the kids are really small right i think that it, that kind of sets in and then gets more uh visible because once the kids start talking also right and uh there are a lot of conversations where my wife and i have had is you know the kind of roles that we play right because you can't have both parents be the party parents and the kid is just going to take full advantage of it or you can't have both parents be the strict ones and that's what we noticed in our lives right where you know you had one parent who only once you turned a certain age where you realized the parent is not that strict it's just that they had to play that role so we we realized this and this is what we did when we were talking about being parents also is that we cannot be like the villain if i may use the term right because then the kid it's going to impact in there but unfortunately it's just like you said it's science it kind of creeps in uh, the moment my son sees me he says let's play football and then i encourage him and now it's reached a stage where he brings the football to me and says let's play so yeah it's quite interesting uh, the whole way how it works no absolutely and you know which we will definitely talk later but you know if we have the time that you know the in india this is one of the biggest issues that we are seeing is uh you know the role of fathers of traditional fathers versus modernity what you've grown up which you very beautifully said about strict disciplinarian so called father role you know i don't know there is this hindi movie amitabh bachchan's called suryavansham that really epitomizes for me what is the diff- the quandary that the indian fathers are going through should they play, play the traditional role of a strict disciplinarian father in their child's life or should they become like friends dr kapoor has left us with a very very important question and i'm sure all the dads listening to this episode or even moms for that matter right um they must have had that very thought at least once every week right peter i mean look at the stuff that we spoke about in the last half an hour there's so many things that he brought up uh, what's your take on that peter true i mean i guess we're all guilty of it right but our chat with dr rakesh kapoor was so interesting that we decided to make it two episodes so stay tuned next week for more about the science of dads and as always let us know what you thought about the episode you can write to us on popsinapod@gmail.com you can also follow us on social media which is facebook instagram just search for popsinapod and we'll be right there but until then make sure that you listen to the second part of science of dads next tuesday see you then see ya